So, welcome guys to another episode of Shift Slash. My name is Charlie. I'm Alan. And today uh, we are talking about user testing and hopefully in a way that is useful to people that aren't designers. Um, I think as designers, you know, we experiment with this a lot, but this skill set is very useful for people who aren't doing design as well. And uh, for this experiment, um, we are going to be looking at a small prototype I was personally playing with in 2020 uh, yeah. to try and curb the spread of misinformation on social media, which is a gargantuan task. Yeah, so, I mean, we're going to click through this prototype here. Uh, I, I know a little bit about it, but as we go through, I'm going to be asking Charlie some questions just to kind of uh, give a bit more information about each stage in the process. Uh, I, I mean, I guess the the first and most obvious one is, is uh, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, the thing is, uh, we all know what was going on in 2020 with COVID and the, 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 the rumors and the misinformation, disinformation that was flying around. And so what I wanted to try and do is um, find a way to potentially introduce a feature into, you know, a major social media platform that would prevent people from sharing as crazily. Yeah. Like kind of slow down sharing. So it's not as easy as like, you know, tap boom. And, you, you know, I, I, I don't work at Facebook or Twitter or you know, LinkedIn or whatever. So I just thought, you know, what if I just take some screenshots basically uh, and then come up with some small suggestions or tweaks and before I even go to someone I know that works at these companies maybe or even try and do something about it myself, I could just use like lo-fi prototyping by plugging these screens together, these screenshots together and test out the feature myself. Did you uh, uh, start with, you know, this is something that I think is important for, for, for most people is, uh, did you start specifically with an idea in mind when you decided, okay, well, there's this, clearly there's this thing that's going on where, you know, people are sharing without reading the articles. What could I do to solve that? And then you looked mm. at the app or did you say, okay, I have a solution um, and I want to test this thing out. Like, how did you approach it? That's actually a really interesting question because I feel like that's, um, I mean, even even in our work today, like you and I, like how do we come up with a test, right? That yeah. That's a central question to this process always. And for me, I had an idea of maybe having an interstitial screen between the final share and like clicking the share button. So when you click the share button, it's like, here's a warning, which is, you're about to share something that's unverified. Do you want to continue with sharing? That was all like, that was the main idea I had. I didn't actually do that much research because I figured yeah. like, I'm going to build this test and like, just put it out in the world and see what happens. So once you had your idea, what was the next step? And so actually this is something um, that's kind of cool is we can take screenshots of the existing app and just put them up rather than design everything ourselves, right? So for those of you that are just listening, uh, if you're on Spotify, you can open up the video and check it out. Otherwise, you can see on YouTube what we're talking about. I'll do my best to describe it like audibly. But effectively, I just took screenshots of the Facebook app and would paste them in here. Like you see, this isn't um, an actual design in Figma. And I would just hide like the picture and the name of the person with fake stuff myself, but everything else is real. And then I built out only the few screens I needed to test, like the pop-up or the, you know, this kind of modal thing. And then I guess I just sort of thought about like, what would the flow be? Like what happens when you click share? What's the pop-up look like? And then what happens from there? And then we have the prototype. So here we can see the arrows of everything linking up together in Figma. And I think all in this maybe took like three to, f three to five hours um, because the screenshotting thing makes things really easy. And I, and I also didn't spend too much time making fancy pop-ups, right? I was just like the mo as basic as they come. Because the point of a test like this, and this is sort of why we're saying that this isn't just for designers, it's to validate the idea, not the aesthetics. Yeah. And I think one interesting thing here that, that generally happens is like, 
Okay, so you have this interstitial screen, you have an idea of what it might be, and then building the prototype kind of changes the initial idea. As you start to flesh things out, you realize there's a lot more states and a lot more things to consider and different variations, which I can see here you have a bunch of different variations. Yes, those actually all, I think, made it into the cut uh, because they were, but like you said, they were the different states. Like I hadn't thought about originally when I was building this, I hadn't thought about what happens when you click on an article to read it if it's not verified. And so then I was like, oh, what if there's the same interstitial? Like, what if it's like, um, would you like to read this article? Not just would you like to share it? And so all that stuff started to emerge as you design the thing. Yeah. And and throughout the, this process, so you're, you're designing this, how are you thinking of, of sharing it? Like, how are you thinking of actually getting people to click through it? So, so that's where there's a lot of tools right now that are really awesome. And um, the, the, there's one called Maze that, you know, I, I was kind of talking to you about recently where yeah. we're able to not just use the Figma prototype, but rather uh, put the prototype in this tool and then people can go and, and start clicking on it. And what's cool and what people might not always think about when it comes to these sorts of tests is you need to think about the goals. So on this screen, what should you click on, on the, or rather, what should you do? So in my case, uh, in, in, this, in this prototype, here, the idea was people would open up the app, so they would land on this, and I would have a mission that said, share this article. So they could either click on share right away, where it would ask them if they had the article, or they could click on the article first, kind of scroll through it, and then click on the share, at which point it asks them, why are you sharing? So you see, in this case, it didn't ask, did you read it? Because I, I could detect that there was like the click. But regardless, the whole point was to get them to finally share. And like what happened here was there was a lot of steps, right? Like, have you verified the source? Like, yes or no? And if someone says no, it's like your post is going to look like this. And it's going to have uh, Michael has not verified this source. Would you like to verify it? And, and then you could click share, right? At which point it would post the unverified source. And it, the point was to kind of shame you a little bit. I, wanna, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see how you would feel about shaming. But in practice, what this would look like in Maze is it would basically be this process and then it would load up the prototype for us. And then after we click get started, it would give some context and this is something that you know i set and then it said continue and here's the mission share this article and now i'm kind of in the wild west as a as a potential like reader right so i'm like i don't really i guess i'll click this and then uh, uh, no and no like share anyway and then it says well done with the flag and then when i click continue the tool asks me a, a small quiz right? How easy did you find it to share using the system? And then what's amazing about this thing is I can then go here and I can see the data and we can see that generally speaking, this thing doesn't have the highest usability. <laughs> you know, and I guess maybe that was expected. Like you're basically asking people to dismiss like five pop-ups before they can share an article. But uh, that was kind of the point, right? I wanted to see like, what's really the appetite? Because I feel sometimes with these tests, we can get very heady, right? Oh, you know, people hate pop-ups. Yeah. But I feel that's become such a, it's become just this thing that we all just know. No one challenges that anymore. And I don't think you should challenge it every time, but I do think there are certain contexts where it's good to go back and challenge your assumptions and see like, how bad is it really? And to be honest with you, I got 103 people answering this, so it's definitely not just friends, right? This thing sort of got some light traction on its own. Yeah. And of the 67 people that answered this specific question, yeah. honestly, like, I thought I would get almost zero very easy responses. Mm -hmm. And here we can see it's 33%. Like, is it amazing? No, but it's not abysmal. Yeah. It's not what I would have thought. Totally. I mean, the whole point of creating a user test is to kind of challenge certain assumptions, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's to to test assumptions, really, not to 
prove yourself right or prove yourself wrong really is to see okay well what what are the unknowns here yeah you know and i think this is an interesting case where you know i can see that the highest friction option was just as as popular pretty much as the kind of mid-level like people seem to have a pretty distributed opinion of how usable this thing is right and with you know with a with you know, 67 responses, that's enough responses to really kind of get a, a good understanding of whether or not something is, is working well or not. You know, yeah. It's not, we're not using Facebook numbers of millions of people. But you don't even need millions, right? Like there's even this whole thing uh, with Norman and Nielsen, you know, the that you only need five sort of deep interviews to get to a oh. meaningful conclusion. And after that, everything sort of tapers off. It's not the same with a test like this where numbers are good. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, what's really fascinating to me was also like when you, when you keep going, you know, how we tell people not to ask, would you like to see this? Because people don't know what they would like. It's, you should really yeah. base this more. But what I like about this question is not just because I got 77 yeses, it doesn't mean that the system is needed Yeah. because most likely if we implemented this, it would not get used, right? Like the, yeah, from so. the numbers, it's clear from even my own sentiment using it as, as the creator. I was like, oh, this is exhausting. Yeah. But what is interesting about asking would you questions when they're done in a specific way, like in, like in my case over here, is you get a sentiment for what people are feeling about the situation. And when I see 77 yeses for wanting to see such a system, when a prototype like this was released in 2020, I think yeah. that that was speaking a lot to the discomfort and the lack of like, there was an itch that people were feeling, I think, towards the internet at that point. And this was a way to... Yeah, it's to help see like, where is the problem, you know? Exactly, exactly. It might not be the solution, but That's it's it. something to test whether or not there is a problem, which is an, really kind of one of the most important things. Like if you do a user test and you can validate a problem area, mm -hmm. that's gold, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. For me, better than doing a user test and being like, okay, this is this is the solution, right? Because if you have a problem, then it becomes a lot more workable. Um, if you do a user test and you get really no meaningful information or things are kind of all pretty much standard across the board, then you don't really learn anything, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, so it's super interesting. How would you recommend someone testing their own prototypes? Yeah, there's this video by Google that's called How to Conduct a Gorilla Usability Test. Yeah. And it's just really well done. And yeah. then Norman Nielsen Group has another one uh, that they did for during the pandemic. And they were like, yeah. how to run user tests on Zoom. So I think those are two links like we can put in the description. Yeah. Um, and fundamentally, like this tool is fancy Yeah. in terms of how basic a user test can be, right? Like in reality... You know, if you have your screen shared, I can just be like, okay, tell me what you'd like to click on right now. You can just tell me on this. And I'd be like, okay, is this what you expected? And you can say yes or no. And then we can have yeah. a chat about that, right? Like that's really all it is. And I think the number one thing, and you, you probably feel this as well. I mean, I feel like this is something you're also very good at, which is asking questions without getting antsy about the answer. Where I feel like a lot of novice testers that's their biggest challenge, where it's like they put the device or the, the screen in front of a potential customer or whatever, and then the, the customer's confused, and so they click on the wrong thing, and you see the tester come in and be like, uh, you should have clicked that thing, or be like, oh, sorry, sorry, one sec, one sec, and they like kind of correct course, and it's that's, that's where I always tell people, like, calm down. Yeah. Let them get it wrong, and if they so, do, be like, why did you think that was the right answer, you know? Yeah. What, what were you expecting? can be that your test is not well structured or your prototype is not fleshed out enough. Yeah. And sometimes, unfortunately, if you go into a user testing session and that's when you realize it, that's fine. You know, you should still be able to have questions that are important and interesting for the user you have on the call. Right. Um, you know, I think that's one thing that for me, especially in the early days, I, I really wanted to have a sense of like, you know, control and just 
clear structure and, you know, five minute, five minute, five minute, and really like tight time bosses, which is good in some instances for sure. But sometimes things go wrong. Yeah. It's not always possible to get exactly what you need out of the situation. And you just have to adapt to find ways of, of still making it work for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's never a waste of time to be having a conversation with uh, the people who are, you know, like, interfacing with your application or you know the people who are maybe in the market that you're trying to break into um so even if the prototype fails and uh, you know even when you're setting up your 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 kind of user test script which oftentimes i'll write a script uh, which is is fairly common you know it's a great thing to kind of follow along and have yourself uh, give yourself a bit of structure in order to reduce the amount of mess ups Right. But within that, you should also have questions. Usually at the end or at the beginning, you'll have kind of more general questions. Um, and that's something you can always fall back on. Yeah. And I actually feel that the, uh, I don't know if you have this experience, Alan, where like you give someone a prototype and then the conversation goes totally off the rails, but not yeah. in a bad way, right? Like we, the, the 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 person will get stuck on a specific interaction and then we have this like crazy conversation right and I, yeah. i've been in a situation personally where like i was with someone else who was not as experienced and then we left the test and the person was like well we didn't finish the test and it's like yeah but man that was gold <laughs> that conversation was gold and it was because we had specified exactly what we wanted to learn from that test so it doesn't mean that these tangents are always good but if we knew that what we wanted out of this test ultimately was, you know, does this bring, does this make the intended audience feel good about, you know, whatever that we're trying to figure out? Like in this case, does my sharing test help you read more articles, right? Yeah. That's kind of one thing because now you click share and it says you haven't read the article. Do you want to read before sharing? And you click yes. And then let's say a user stops and goes like, well... I'm not sure about this. You know, I don't tend to read very much. I tend to be much more of a video person. And then we like go off on this thing. And then we start talking about like video and how do you validate that you've seen a video? Even though I didn't finish my prototype, I still learned a lot about the problem I'm trying to fix. Yeah. And so the test did its job. Totally. You don't need to be so dogmatic about finishing every single test, you know, and cutting rich conversations short. So I think that's, that's one really big one. There's basically no substitute for, for talking to people and as many people as possible. You can uh, avoid the situation. Like oftentimes you're most anxious about getting a user test done from A to Z when you don't have that many opportunities to talk to users. Mm -hmm. So you need to maximize the value or, or your perceived value of that user test. And the best way I found to kind of reduce that anxiety is just ensure that you speak to a lot of different people. Yeah. Um, that way you can get what you need, but you can also, you know, uh, just be more relaxed. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Awesome. So thanks guys for tuning in. This was a bit of an experiment where we thought maybe we'll like interview e each other for projects. If you like this, let us know. Maybe we can try it again. You know, Alan, it would be awesome to hear about one of your projects. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this. If uh, ah. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed this. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right, dude. Bye-bye. Peace. Now I feel like I'm in my lectures. <laughs> okay, class. <laughs>